My name is Vian McReynolds, and I do have a PhD in community psychology from the University of Texas at Austin. I guess I'm the founder, curator of Tour de Hood, and also um, I command the space called The Compound. My whole life is geared around, you know, health and trying to influence other individuals to get healthy, and I think that's my um, uh, practicing community psychology in my community. One of the things that within my life I would like, you know, people to do is do something to benefit the whole of the community. And so when I think about, you know, kicking kombucha, you know, the whole thing, they're a local company, uh, you know, just right up the street. I can actually talk to the producer, you know, of the product. And that's the kind of thing we need. It builds community to be there on the shelves because sometimes I'm like, oh, please be on the shelf where I can get a good nutritional uh, drink into my system. And it may seem like just a little thing, but what it does to someone's health is, is immense. If you do one thing, that is gigantic when you compare that to nothing. If you just think something is infinitely larger than nothing. You see like little snippets of the picture, but it's hard to weave all the pieces together and understand the full, I guess, uh, the full nature of what, you know, everything there. I mean, it's every now and then I think I have like a wave that comes over me where I, I, I can kind of get it. I feel like I almost get it, you know, but still I'm not quite there. I mean, maybe down the line I'll, I'll come to understand it. I didn't know quite what it was, but a long time ago, my dad and my uncle, they had like the first uh, UFC on VHS. It was all like bootleg, <laughs> you know, copy. I don't know where they got it from, but there was a guy in there, his name was Hoist Gracie. He would always beat these guys, not like punching and kicking, but he would, you know, be grappling around and get a hold of their arm, you know, leg or just their neck. and. That was something, you know, I have brothers and cousins always a rough house, and that was always the way I kind of like, you know, this is the way I just moved, you know? Didn't know what it was, so once I was on the mat the first day, I mean, I haven't got off since. It's, it's kind of funny, even though my injuries happened through jiu-jitsu, but I recovered well and came out of it more positive because of it. So I was pretty much in probably the best shape of my life. You know, I actually won my division there in L.A., and I was just still kind of riding off of that. And uh, there was a tournament in Dallas. It's called Naga, and it rules a little bit different over there. Kind of allow most pretty much anything will go. You know, the first match went well, made it through. The second match um, ended up getting caught really fast by a guy, real intense, uh, by a leg lock. All kinds of stuff just goes through your head. And I ended up getting carted out in front of all these people and uh, end up at uh, Baylor. And next thing I know, I pretty much woke up, you know, had a huge halo on my leg and about 10 rods and pins sticking out of it. Well, once I actually got the, uh, I got the whole, you know, halo thing off, my leg always gave me trouble, you know, so I was still training because I couldn't stay off the mat. Almost a year later, I was training in the cage, helping a guy run ready for a fight, and he just, he dropped down real low on an ankle and just went for uh, this takedown when I was bracing myself against the cage, and he just, it, it went again, and I knew exactly the moment it happened, that it was broken again, and 
You know, it was, uh, it's just really, really hard after, you know, you think you're in, like the first time I was in the best shape of my life and you really feel let down by your body when something like that happens, you know? And this time was this kind of, uh, <laughs> you feel a little hopeless. really really hard to take because it was like I just went through this so it was uh, one of those things to where I knew that that first recovery period it couldn't be the same this time I needed to focus my energy on something that's more hands-on and maybe uh, outside of myself This is like everybody's company, you know. I mean, everybody built it, you know, so it's not really like a staff. I mean, it's a pretty loose arrangement we have working here. So, I mean, it's uh, the initial floor was John, myself, and then uh, he brought in like his, you know, best friend Carlos, and I brought in mine, Andy. So, that was kind of the floor we have, and from there, you know, the circle grew a little bit more, but it was always from within the group of people we knew. Everybody who was involved in this was at like a point in their life to where I think everybody was ready for some type of change. I'd always kind of gone through life and I would do, uh, just doing what I thought I was supposed to do. And, you know, I was working as a production artist slash graphic designer. And I just kind of thought that's all I was ever gonna do. It was one of those things where you could pour all your energy into something you know, positive and build it from essentially nothing, you know. Well, you know, we all kind of decided, um, it was just kind of in passing or at the river uh, at Carlos's dad's property and we just decided to give it a shot. You know, we talked about wanting to do something like be in the community, you know, and Robert had came up with a really good product. He really believed in what he had, you know. I had never tried kombucha, you know, before that point. And they got me to try it and I'm like, what is this? You know, I'm like, nah, man, this isn't good at all. A couple hours go by and I'm like, you know what, let me try some more, you know? And so Robert gives me my own bottle and, and you know, by the, I think like by the fifth hour it was empty. I'm like, hey man, you got any more of that? I'm like, that's pretty good. We've really got to do this. You know, I was on board, you know, within a few hours just because it grew on me that quick. You know, it was really, really good. It's hard to get motivated when you're just by yourself, you know? And I was, I was a little hesitant, you know, just, you know, just, just because it wasn't something that I ever uh, imagined, you know, put that much energy into to where we actually make a business out of it. Because you know, a lot of things are lost. You know, we're not have no knowledge of food business or manufacturing whatsoever. You know, if if you don't have a direction, you don't have like a dream, like a goal, then surround yourself or be close to someone that does. And then along that way, that journey, you're gonna find find your own, or the other one might become your own. It went from it went from just trying to start a company and maybe getting out in the community to like when he starts talking about like helping someone achieve a dream. I feel like we owe it to everyone that buys a bottle for all of us to try really hard to make the best thing we can make. We've been going about life the same way for you know. 10, 15, 20, uh, I mean, you know, whatever many years, and when you have a big break in your life to where it's just a dramatic shift, that's when I started playing around. I was really into tea, just from all the training, you know, I had a lot of time. All I did was teach and train, so pretty much I had a lot of free time, so I'd wake up in the morning and, you know, just drink all this tea and just kind of hang out on the porch with the dogs and just look out the window, you know. You know, it's something that I always wanted to do. You know, I was already really into food, and it was something that seemed like I could do, even though I'm hobbling around the kitchen and all, it seemed simple enough. So, uh, not only was I a fan of their flavor, where they came from, but also uh, what they're said to do for you. You know, so the idea with uh, combining the different teas, we use a blend of teas, so it's white, green, oolong, air, black. Um, each has a different flavor it's going to part, but also has a different uh, health benefit behind it. So, that was the whole thing, was just a produce something that would, you know, help heal me. And uh, once I actually did recover, went back up to the gym, um, 
you know, I brought it with me. And basically the gym was my, you know, my lab, like the, the testing grounds. People walked to the door, we all like, hey, try this. So kombucha is like part of the whole culture of Whole Foods, you know, you come to find out. And whenever they found out that Houston had one, you know, they were, you know, all, all for it and behind it. And, you know, we got that email just months after we started asking us to come into Whole Foods, which we're just like, we thought we were going to do some farmer's markets, <laughs> you know, so now we're, you know, not only here in this city, but we also supply San Antonio, Austin, um, Dallas, and even as far as Oklahoma City at this point. You know, from time to time, I'll take a step back and, like, look around and be like, man, I can't believe we built this from, you know, some little tiny, like, court mason jar, you know, all the way to something to where we just have thousands of bottles laying around here and, uh, you know, putting them out across, you know, the whole state of Texas. I mean, this is wild. Walking around, you see people just drinking something you made. So it's just, it's, uh, it's pretty incredible. When you do have, like, an injury, like, uh, where your mobility is taken away or other things are taken away, you can't fight it. It's one of those things to where you have to take it for what it is, you know, accept it for what it is, and then you know, my whole thing is to take it, that experience, and come out, come out of it, you know, with something worthwhile, something better. Even like the worst experiences I've had, you know, after a while, I'll come to terms with it, and I'll, I'll take something positive from it to where that.